ask you, if you will, please to get a Bible and turn to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. We'd like to read the uh, tenth verse of Psalm 62. Psalm 62 and verse 10, the Word of God says, Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. I want us to think primarily about the last half of that verse of Scripture that says, If riches increase, set not thine heart upon them. How many of you have more money today than you did ten years ago? Nobody. It's a sad, sad congregation. Let me go back further. How many of you have more than you did when you were a child? How many of you have more than you did when you were a child? So guess what has increased? Riches have increased. Probably every person in this building has more than we might want to acknowledge or realize. Riches have increased, and I want us to all remember the only reason that riches have increased is because God has blessed us. Amen. The Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every blessing that we have comes from God. Scripture specifically says repeatedly, riches come from God. And so when we begin to have those riches, and we're going to concentrate primarily about money, but money, there are many, many other ways that we're rich. I hope that all of us are rich in a knowledge of God, in a knowledge of God's Word. We ought to be rich. We ought to be increasing in our knowledge of God and His Word. We ought to be rich in our fellowship with God. We ought to be closer to God today than we have ever been in our lives. We need to understand that we are rich in friends. We need to thank God for those friends and acknowledge that we are rich in having family and friends, children, grandchildren, all the different ways that we are rich. It's God that has made us rich. I'm rich in my wife. Having a wife that's a godly wife, the Bible says a prudent wife, a godly wife, it's from the Lord, God gave me my wife. I'm rich to have her if I had nothing in a material way. If I had no money at all in the bank, if I had nothing, if I didn't have a house, if I didn't have a car, if I didn't have anything else, I would be rich just because I have the, my wife. I'm rich in having my children, my grandchildren. Rich. I'm rich because of the parents I've had. They loved me. They taught me. They disciplined me. I, I have no doubt that today I would be in prison if it weren't for my daddy and his firm discipline. So we need to realize there are many, many different ways that we are rich. And then the scripture says here, if riches increase... Set not your heart upon them. Now, it doesn't mean you're not to love your children. It doesn't mean you're not to love your family. But sometimes people, when they are rich with a good wife or good family or good children or whatever they have in people right now, in friends, sometimes they set their heart upon them instead of upon God. Did you know there are many people that love their children far more than they love God but God's the one that gave them those children there are people that love money 
more than they love God, but God's the one that gave them that money. There are people that love the knowledge that they have, whether you talk about knowledge of things in the world or knowledge of God's word. God's the one who gave us a mind and a brain to be able to have whatever knowledge we have. We are rich in knowledge and we need to acknowledge God is the one that gave us that knowledge so we are rich in all these different ways. But the word of God says here, if riches increase, set not thy heart upon them. Don't put them first in your life. Don't let your love for any person, place, or thing in this world interfere with your love for God. Put God first. <coughs> the Word of God says, in 1 John chapter 2, the Word of God says, Love, and that, that's what that means. Set not your heart upon them. You know what that means? Give me one word, a four letter word. Love. Love. If riches increase, don't love those riches like you are loving God. If riches increase, the Word of God says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We're to love God. We're to love our neighbor. We're to love our wives. We're to love our children. I'm not saying we're not to love them, but we need to understand that God is the source of of everything we have and God is to take preeminence in our lives and I pray that God will help us especially right now we're going to go in the direction primarily of money because it's so easy to love money and, and let me mention one of the scripture this, this scripture I had jotted down because I, I had never really noticed it so much until last night I believe that our nation is headed for major trouble I believe the reason that our nation is headed for major trouble is because as a nation we have turned our backs on God. Now there are many, many people who are preparing for hard times, for difficult times. I'm preparing, I hope you're preparing. The Bible says it's a fool that sees winter coming and doesn't make preparation for that. Hard times are coming. But, don't let your affection be on whatever it is that you're saving up. Don't let your trust be in whatever it is that you're saving up. Don't let your confidence be in whatever it is that you're saving up. Because all God has to do is blow upon it. And here's the scripture that I wanted to emphasize before we go to the New Testament. The Word of God says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. That's found in Proverbs chapter 11. And verse 4. Think about that scripture now. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. When God brings his wrath on individuals or families or churches or nations, all the money you've got stacked up is not going to help you when God brings his wrath. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. What will help you? in the day of wrath. When God begins to bring his judgment on our nation and his wrath is poured out, we cry out like the Old Testament prophet, in wrath, O Lord, in wrath, remember mercy. And as we're crying out for that, we need to understand our obedience to God, our faithfulness to God, our love for God, and our service to God will help us in the day of wrath. Be faithful to God. Put God first in your life. Do what God's word says for you to do. And God will help you in the day of wrath. But riches profit not. Does that kind of concern you a little bit? Amen. <laughs> yeah. It does me because it makes me realize whatever I've got stacked up. That's not what I better be trusting in. Go to uh, Colossians just a moment. Turning your Bibles to the book of Colossians, I want you to notice in Colossians chapter 3, notice please verse 2. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, the Word of God is talking here about our love or our affections or setting our heart on something. You know, the Word of God says that Jesus says where you're 
treasure is, there will your heart be also. If God were to examine your heart today, what would God say you love more than anything? If God were to expose my heart today to you and to everyone else, I'm not sure that my heart has God number one. Sometimes my heart goes after the things of the world. Sometimes my heart goes after riches. And even when riches are increasing, and by the way, the Word of God tells us that it doesn't matter how much riches increase, a man is never satisfied with riches. Doesn't matter how much you get. You cannot, you will not ever get enough that you say, that's enough, I don't want any more. It's never going to happen. Now listen to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. The Word of God says, Set your affection on things above, but not on things on the earth. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You ever seen anybody riding around with a sign on the truck, I love my what? I love my truck. We have things, things that we set our affection on. And the Word of God tells us here, I determine where my affection is. Set your affection. That means I have to do the setting. Well, I'm the only one that can set my affection. You can't change my affection. You need to pray, God help me, help you, help us. That we would set our affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Is that connected with the text that we started out with today that says, If riches, in Psalm 62 and verse 10, if riches, what you fill in the blanks there. If riches blank, if riches increase, set not thine heart upon them setting your heart you see setting your heart setting I want everybody to set your watches right now okay your watch right now the time is 10.43 10.43 you set them now set it for 10.43 not 11.43 set it for 10.43 you know what will happen if you set your watch according to what I just told you to set your watch at, and you go by that setting, and you follow that setting, you're going to be late for work tomorrow. You're going to mess up in a lot of ways because you set your watch by the wrong standard of time. You use my standard of time. And the devil's always telling me to set my affection over here. Set my affection over here. Look at this. Oh, here's what will make you happy. Here's what will give you confidence. Here's what you need. <coughs> and it's always, the devil's always showing me T-H-I-N-G-S, things on the earth. But this text says, set your effect, set you set. Now, I'm, I'm in seriously telling you now, you forget about what I said about setting your watch. But I am telling you, set your, this is from God's word, set your affection. That means you have to do something to set your affection. That means that I have to stop allowing my heart to love something or someone more than I love God. I have to stop doing that and start doing something else. If, I, if you had obeyed me when I told you to set your clock for 1043, you would have stopped a correct setting you had on your watch and turn it to a wrong setting but if your watch is wrong and you set it for the right time you'll be in order in your life and the only way that I'm going to have order and peace and joy in my life is if I stop setting my affection on things of the earth and set my affection on things above if riches increase Set not 
thine heart upon them. Did you know the more riches increase, the more likely it is that your heart is going to be set on those riches? The more money you have, the more likely it is. That's the reason that Jesus said it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. doesn't say it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven when he dies. It says it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is defined in the word of God as righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You cannot be in the kingdom of heaven if you have your affection set on things in the earth. You will be out. You will be out of the kingdom of heaven if your affections are on things in the earth. And when those things go away, you're going to be in a hell here on this earth. There's a hell when this world's over, but there's a hell for God's disobedient children that set their affection on things of the earth rather than on things above. Turn in your Bibles just now, if you will, to 1 Timothy, just about six pages past where we're reading. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And Paul loved Timothy. Paul wanted Timothy to do what was right. Paul corrected Timothy. Paul told Timothy, here's what you need to do. Here's what you better do. Uh, we studied just two or three weeks ago about how Paul told Timothy seven things. He better watch out for yourself. Seven things he mentions. In 1 Timothy, he mentions seven things you better watch out for, Timothy. Now here's one of those things that he says you better watch out for. Jesus says this way. Jesus says, beware of, fill in the blank, beware of. Well, okay, he did say beware of sheep. No, he didn't. He, said, he didn't say beware of sheep. He said beware of wolves and sheep clothing. But relative to this text, what does he say? Beware of covetousness. Covetousness. Greed and covetousness. Now, the Apostle Paul is writing to the young preacher Timothy and he's telling them there are people that their affection is on the wrong thing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, listen please, beginning in verse 5, these people whose affection is on the wrong thing, he says, there, there are perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Have you ever heard that? That gain is godliness? That God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have more money. God wants you to abound in riches. God wants you to have a bigger house. He wants you to have a bigger car. He wants you to have more money. Oh, brethren, that's a lie from the devil. And Jesus addresses that. God addresses that in his word when he says there are people that suppose that gain, that's getting more money, that gain is godliness. Jesus, God's word says, this is Paul writing to Timothy in verse 6, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment. Godliness. What is godliness? Well, among other things, it's loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself, and it's when you begin to set your affection on things above rather than on things of the earth. When you begin to serve God faithfully, that's godliness. Godliness is living the way God tells you to live. Godliness with contentment. Be content with what you have. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, it takes a tremendously wise person when you increase in riches not to set your heart on them, on those riches. Don't depend on money. It won't save you. Verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. When I'm laying in a casket up here in the front, you check my pockets. There won't be any money. There won't be I hope nobody will even get my watch. I hope my, I mean, I hope somebody will get my watch. I hope somebody will get my ring. I'm not going to take it with me. Won't do you any good. Won't do me any good. That's exactly right. Watch, the battery's going to go dead in that watch within the next year anyway. You don't need money. Godliness with contentment is great gain. 
We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we're going to carry nothing out. The next verse says, verse 9, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. We have a couple of men here that they know how to set a snare. Brother Richard, you and Brother Walker know how to set a snare, don't you? You know how to set a snare to drown an animal that needs to be removed? That's what the devil's doing right now. He's setting snares everywhere. And the devil is a more effective uh, trapper than anybody in this building. And the devil is trapping. He is snaring people. And he says there's one main snare that the devil uses to snare people. And that's money and riches. And we're chasing money and riches and when we increase with riches we set our affection on those riches and then we begin to compromise on the principles of righteousness because we set our affection on money instead of on God verse 10 says for I'm going to read it incorrectly for money is the root of all evil how many of you have ever heard money is the root of all evil. That is not what God says in his word. There's nothing evil about money. The love of money. That's what the word of God says here. For the love of money is the root of all evil. I would say that probably 99% of people that love money so much. don't. They would deny they love money so much. How many of you think you might love money more than you want to admit you love money how many of you think you might as you are increasing in riches that sometimes you set sometimes you set your affection on those riches and I want to encourage you today to remember the love of money setting your affection on those riches it will bring great sorrow into your life Verse 10, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the word of God says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. What does the text say from Psalm 62 and verse 10? If riches increase, set not thine heart upon them. What's the pronoun them in Psalm 62, the last word in Psalm 62? Set not thine heart upon them. What's the them pronoun referring to? To the riches. Don't set your heart on those riches. The love of money is the root of all evil. I think it's wonderful that God's word never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was a problem 6,000 years ago when this world began and God spoke it into existence, the problems and the temptations and what we face today are basically no different than what people have always faced. You might say, oh well, well yes they are. We've got computers, we've got television. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are not of God, but they're of the devil. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All sin fits into one of those three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the devil's been using those three temptations in various forms. He's been using them all the time that men have been on the face of this earth. If riches increased, set not thine affection upon them. You know, I, in closing, go with me to Job. I love, I love, like you didn't know, I love to read from Job. Job was a, Job was a man that feared God and a man that shunned evil. Look in your Bibles at Job chapter 1. I want you to see a man that his riches are going to increase. 
He didn't start out with all these possessions he had. His riches increased. But he did not set his affection on those riches that God gave him. He knew that God gave him. God's the one that gave him all of his cattle and his asses and everything that he had materially. God's the one that gave him his ten children. God's the one that gave him his wife. God's the one that gave him his help. And he was rich in all those areas. But he remembered who gave him all those things and, and he loved God the most. In Job 1 verse 1 the word of God says there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed or shunned evil and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters was he rich there were born unto him seven sons and three when Teresa and I got married before we married when we were talking about getting, getting married, we wanted to have 12 children. That was our desire. Let's have 12 children. That's what we both agreed on was 12 children. It didn't happen, but it's all right. God gave us, God gave us wonderful children. But in fact, you know, I just thought, thank you, Lord. He gave me four children and he gave me eight grandchildren. And I'd never thought about this before. But that's the 12 children I wanted. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Brethren, well, those grandchildren, they are children and they are grand. God gave me the 12 children. Teresa, isn't that wonderful? We do have our 12 children. Job had seven sons and three daughters. He was rich. That's verse, verse 2. Verse 3 says... His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. He was the richest man in all the east. And as his riches increased, he did not set his heart upon those riches. He continued to fear God, shun evil, live upright, live a godly life. He never let those riches interfere with his love for God. And then when he lost all of these possessions and all ten of his children in chapter one, when he lost in all of that, he said, the Lord gave... Oh, what did he remember? Where did all these riches come from? The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Did you know he's going to take away everything you've got one day? Everything you've got, he's going to take away from you. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And then in the next chapter, the devil comes along again and begins to afflict his body. And he had, was he rich in his health up until chapter 2? Yeah, he was rich in his health too. And, and then God took away his health and he had boils all over his body. And his wife, was he rich in having a good wife? Oh, yes, he was. She made a mistake. She messed up. She said, curse God and die. Job said, shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil? And the word evil there doesn't mean ungodly things. It means trouble. It's all right if we receive trouble. And again, the word of God says in all this, Job sinned not with his lips. Brethren, we have a, a marvelous, wonderful God of heaven and earth. And I pray that God will help us to realize and remember he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. You hear that? He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. You will never be satisfied with the things of this world. May God help us not to set our affection on things of the earth, but to set our affection on things above is my prayer for Christ's sake.